Well, hey there, Mission Control. It has been a while since I've been able to post videos. Uh, the last few are kind of old um, in my timeline. To you, they're probably very sequential uh, from where I left off, but for me, it's been quite a few weeks. Uh, I think it's been two weeks, actually, uh, since I posted a video. Sorry I haven't been able to get to more. Honestly, it's just time. Uh, it's not that I don't want to record videos, it's just that I don't have any time. Uh, things at work have really picked up for the for good. Uh, doing lots of good things there. Really excited about what uh, we're doing. Uh, and we've had lots of things to do around here um, that have kept me from being able to record because I have so many things to go do. Uh, so uh, I need like my own little film crew. So I wanted to take a moment, just kind of sit and look at amazing potatoes. Look at these potatoes. No, we're not gonna just look at potatoes the whole time. Uh, actually, I have some things I want to go over. Um, kind of talk about what I've been up to, uh, some things that are going to be happening, uh, and then some videos that we're going to do, just kind of set things up, kind of get people caught up with where we're at and let you know where we're headed. So first, um, just been really, really busy. Really, really busy, really tired, uh, worn down. Mrs. Marsh and I are both burned out. This has been a long, hard road. Uh, that we're on, but hope is starting to really sneak in. I remember when we first started and somebody made a comment, you're an idiot, you're gonna fail, I can't stand to watch this, um, it's doomed to failure. And you know that could still happen, but um, that feeling that you get from someone when they say something like that, um, it really kind of hurts. And anyway, I just, there's a graphic I saw, it's um, the emotional journey of doing anything great and it starts off it's a u-shaped curve essentially and it starts off like you're high on a kite this this is totally going to work you're going to change the world it's going to be amazing and you get going you're like man this is kind of hard this kind of sucks this is probably not going to work and i am a total failure and i'm crazy for even thinking about it and then you that's kind of like the dark gloomy pit of despair where you're like this is never going to end well uh, and then you start coming out of that thing after you persevere, if you do persevere, and you start getting with, well, it still sucks, but uh, it seems to be getting better. And then you're like, man, this actually really might work. And uh, wow, this is amazing. It really is going to change the world to, you know, it really did work. And, you know, where you get on that thing depends on how good the idea is and what level of perseverance and grit that you have. Uh, so I kind of wanted to say we've been in that dark, pit of despair and when people said stuff like that at the very beginning man there's not a day that goes by I don't think about that comment uh, and wondering if we really are doomed to fail but it doesn't seem like we are anymore in fact it seems like maybe we're on our way out of the pit in fact uh, one of the things coming up that I have here that makes me really feel like we're on the right track See if I can get this here. Come on, you can do it. Little dry fingers here. I'm holding up the Sunday, May 27th schedule for the International Space Development Conference. It's held by the National Space Society. Uh, uh, this is current as of May 7th. Uh, at 2 p.m. on May 27th, it says the real Martian is going to be talking about Farmer in the Sky. That's the title of the segment for Space Business. Uh, I am freaking honored and totally stoked to be going to this thing. So Mrs. Martian and I are flying down to LA. Uh, that's where it's going to be held at the Grand Sheridan there. You can check them out. I think it's isdc.org or just go to the National Space Society or type in International Space Development Conference. You can check out the schedule there. Jeff Bezos is gonna be there, NASA's gonna be there. This is a really big deal. It's a four day conference. We're speaking on the last day. And yeah, that's not the world's greatest slot or anything like that, but it doesn't matter. It's freaking awesome. We're gonna be going. Um, we, we have done stuff that other people have talked about. They've done pieces of, they've done theory on, they've done math on, but we built it, darn it. We built it and it's working. now. I know that these potatoes, for example, probably got some problems and there's things that we need to learn. But I got some other things to show you too that things are going well right now. Thank you God. Things are going well. Like 
we persevered, we've made it through. Uh, we've had to exercise a, a severe amount of grit to make it through that pit of despair. And being able to be honored with something like going to speak at the International Space Development Conference 2018 with the likes of Jeff Bezos as one of the lead keynote speakers, I'll be a keynote speaker on Sunday, is phenomenal. Um, so I encourage you to share this with your friends, sh show up, uh, get tickets, go there, check it out. There are going to be some really cool, very cool topics that are being talked about here. Asteroid mining, colonization, space business, farming on Mars, farming up in space. That's my section. Please come and check that out. Uh, share it on Twitter, share it on LinkedIn, share it, share it, share it, share it everywhere. This is cool. It's exciting. Um, and I'm just blessed to even be able to go there. So it also means that I have less time to be out here because I need to go write a speech. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't been uh, available. This is really cool. I'm so honored again to even be considered to go do it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do um, my, my speech and then it's going to be followed by a panel with uh, Phil Sadler from the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center at ASU. They do a lot of cool work there. They have the lunar uh, growing module. Bruce uh, Vanaman of Avello International, Bart Womack of Eating Growth Systems. It's going to be moderated by uh, Mr. Thomas Andrew Olson, who's uh, from the Center for Space Commerce and Finance. Uh, going to be way cool, way cool to be there and have that conversation, so check it out. Um, things are growing in the greenhouse. Things are growing really, really well in the greenhouse right now. Uh, and I'm going to give you some pictures of that here. We got potatoes are growing. I got red potatoes back in. These are the Yukon Golds here. I got red potatoes in. The Walla Walla Sweets are growing. We got strawberries. Man, we got strawberries. The watermelon, the cantaloupe are growing. We've got corn. We've got freaking corn growing, man. It's awesome. In fact, you know what? Hold on. We're going to go over there and check it out. We got corn. We got an ear of corn there, an ear of corn there, an ear of corn there. What are these up to? One, two. All right, I gotta count these. These are hard to count. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think this is called V8 or V7, something like that. I, I'm learning. I need to learn a lot more, obviously, about these things. But uh, when uh, corn farmers, when they grow corn, they keep track of the, the nodes. Did you know that corn is actually a form of grass? I didn't know that. Uh, but here we have corn going doing really well. You know what? I'm excited about corn. One of the major reasons why is because it's nitrogen fixing, meaning it pulls nitrogen out of the system. Um, and since we have the fish down below, the ammonia cycle to the nitrates, the nitrites, the nitrogen cycle there, I should say, um, these guys I think are going to be really helping clean the system. But we've had some challenges with them, but look at how they're growing. You can tell we have different lights here because, um, well, honestly, because I put them on the wrong side of the building. Uh, when I chose where to put plants, it was the middle of winter and this particular area was getting a massive amount of light because the sun is directly over here and it was coming in because it's very low in the southern sky. That way's north, that way's south. And uh, you know, I just, I thought about shading but I didn't think about it enough and these really should be over on the south side of the building exposed underneath the big giant uh, clear cover that we have now. Uh, so I had to augment uh, with some grow lights here. Uh, I have three of them up top and it's working really well. They've straightened out. These were all kind of leaning uh, to the south to get more sun. But they've all straightened out now and they're headed up. We got the tassels on them. I mean, it's corn. It's freaking corn, man. They say knee high by July. It's May. It's May and we're well over knee high, especially on some short guy like me. So uh, way cool. This is so cool. It's working. It's working! <laughs> so we got the uh, trees are growing. We got the apple tree. The peach tree and the almond tree are kind of, they're kind of hurting. They don't look like they made the transport up here. Um, I got a one year warranty on them, so uh, I got to wait. And if they don't do anything, I, I'm going to get new ones. The uh, grapefruit tree is doing great. It's got grapefruits budding on it. And the uh, clementine tree is sprouting new sprouts, new growth, and it has a new clementine on it. So it's rooted. Uh, we got a beet growing, we got kiwis growing, we got garlic growing, we got green onions growing, carrots, broccoli, green beans are still going, man. They are still going. 
We've got lettuce galore. We're harvesting heads of lettuce out of the building. You know, in a few weeks, I'm supposed to do the Martian challenge, but we're already eating out of the building. Uh, it's Right? That's so cool. We got herbs growing. So um, the microgreens are doing well. We're looking like we might be able to get a few more customers and hit our initial break even. It's pretty exciting. You know, the hydroponics is working. Uh, it's got some challenges with it. RJ, you were right. Wherever the sun was at, the uh, algae has a little bit of a bloom. I uh, really like your idea, by the way, of the uh, foam just going across the top of everything. Uh, but it's, it's working uh, as it is right now. But I think your, uh, your hypothesis, your theory, your forecast, your predictions, I think they're gonna be correct. So we're gonna wanna modify that. Um, but in general, the split, the aquaponics water going up to uh, a hydroponic table is working. Uh, there's enough uh, surface area there. The bacteria appear to be doing their job. The plants are growing, they're, they look healthy. Um, we even have some nasturtiums that we put into the system and they're growing in that. Uh, they're not gonna be able to stay there. But uh, we do need to figure out how to move away from the one inch pots and move it into two inch pots. So basically that little section there, that's just for you, RJ, you're the man. Uh, you get to call all those things. I'm sorry you're stuck in the apartment and I'm definitely listening to what you say. Uh, so we'll see what we can do here with you. Um, so let's talk about what's kind of coming up. This is the uh, broccoli and the cauliflower underneath here. I think the big challenge we have here is I just didn't put these shelves up high enough uh, so I can move them around some more and get some more height. Uh, everything's still pretty adjustable in the system. That's part of why we're doing this, just figuring out the optimum height. Uh, I think I tried to get these at 24 inches uh, from bottom to top, and I should have probably went more like a 30 inch type of spacing. But we'll see. Um, this is the hydroponics table here, and it's uh, coming along pretty nicely. Um, experimenting, we've got nasturtiums here that all started as seed and we got the lettuce growing, various states. Some things are doing better than others. Uh, we'll see how everything goes and what we can do to optimize it. Again, I think RJ is gonna be helping us out there. So, uh, we got the space development conference. We gotta do a speech for, so that's gonna take me away from doing some work out here. Um, I wanna go over the backlog with you guys, kinda show you how we keep track of everything. First of all, it's kinda cool. Um, and also just what's in there right now. And, and maybe you guys can uh, point out some things that should be on there. Uh, the backlog is the place where we keep all the work that needs to be done. It's our backlog of work. So um, I also, we started a, a video series on challenges, system challenges. And uh, I'm actually gonna stay out here tonight and try to record a few of them. So you're gonna see me kind of in the same outfit here, which is highly awesome outfit if I do say so myself. Probably worthy of wearing at the Sheridan in front of NASA and everybody. Uh, and I, so I want to get back to that challenge series. We never finished it up. So I want to go over environmental control, especially condensation and dehumidifiers and talking about that. Uh, some more environmental control, boy, the exhaust fan. That's turned in like to the, the number one system in the building. If it doesn't work, things die. Uh, it, it's right up there at the top of if, it, if it's broke, things die list. Uh, one that I think is at the very top of the list is if the power goes out and the pumps stop working, the fish die. Um, the exhaust fan is right up there right next to that. It, it's El Bado in the worst sense. So we want to talk about that. Um, challenges with the fish, I uh, want to go over that. Kind of want to get into the uh, removal of the fish waste. We really haven't been able to spend a lot of time on that. I haven't. I have some cool ideas of ways to get it out of there. Um, we need to talk about that. I want to go over uh, the challenges we've had with the server, actually, some of the automation stuff. We, we've talked about challenges with automation before, but not specifically the server, so I want to go over that. And then um, Arduinos and sensors. Uh, you've seen me doing some repair but I want to, on the sensors, but I want to talk about some things specifically about those. So that's kind of a, a series of videos I'd like to get back to uh, and talk about each one of them individually while we uh, kind of move on through time here. I think there's a lot of things that we've learned um, that are hugely valuable. You know, and I think one of the neat things about what we've done is that it's totally scalable, right? We started all of this in our office. The exact same things that we came up with in our office, fish tanks down below, grow beds, pumping everything up, lights, LEDs, all that, 
essentially is what we've done out here. And, and like I said earlier, I think one of the things that makes us a little different than others is that we stopped talking about it, we actually built it. And it's not just one system. It's not just hydroponics. It's aquaponics and hydroponics. And it's not just aquaponics and hydroponics. It's vertical farming. It's not just vertical farming. It's aquaponics, hydroponics, LED lighting. It's not just LED lighting and those things. It's also a passive solar greenhouse. It's not just that, it's also insulation. It's not just that, it's the dehumidifiers, water reclamation, circulation, the pumps that we have had, the solar panels outside, the anaerobic digester, the automation, the logic, the control application that goes into this remote access into the system and what things are important, what things aren't. The database that goes into everything so you can keep track of it all. This is a full system integration. And I'm not saying that my search has been exhaustive because the world's a very large place, but in the going on nine years now, five years of research, one year of design, and three years worth of build, I haven't seen someone put all of this together. And it takes a lot. So the fact that we have it built and that we can share these lessons with people is very important because whether you like it or not, we're gonna be facing a food challenge, period. End of story, politics aside, it don't matter. It's math, baby, it's math, it's simple, okay? Small planet, lots of people keep growing unless you have death, famine, plague, all those types of things, which I'm not willing to bet on. Uh, we need to feed people. And oh, by the way, you should do that just because you're a good human being, you should do it anyway. So, we're doing it. That's cool. I think that's why we are going to talk here. Uh, so I'm excited about that, obviously. I'm really excited about it, it's way cool. I'm excited to get you guys these challenges that we've had, and I'm excited to just kind of get on with everything as well, um, and, and just keep pushing forward. I will say this, uh, kind of in closing, this year, or for the last three years we've been building, right? This is year number three, so previous two full years, two full years of building, and we've been going nonstop. That means wake up at five in the morning, go to work, come back, work nine, 10 o'clock at night, do it again, weekends get here, wake up, work all day, try to take Sunday off, go back, repeat over and over for two full years, now three years and five months into it. And we've invested a lot of our um, $250,000 of our money. We're done, there's no more money. Uh, we've refinanced the house. We have uh, cashed out retirement. This is where we're at, and we're gonna have to finish with what we got here. Uh, but it's also taken a huge toll on us uh, mentally. It's uh, been kind of depressing in certain places. It's been really hard on family. It's been hard on friends. Uh, we really don't get to go see people or do things. It's been tough, so sorry to all my family and uh, friends that are out there that we don't talk to you more or call you more, but it's for a really good reason that we're doing this. We really want to help people. We really believe in it. And hopefully that comes through in everything that we're doing. Uh, but I say all this to say it is time to start slowing down a little bit. Um, I've sacrificed my physical health. I am the worst shape I've ever been. It's been a pretty easy winter compared to last year's winter, uh, but I put on a lot of weight, so I've started running again uh, very slowly. <laughs> and uh, trying to get into working out again, lifting weights. I was raking the yard the other day, just raking grass, and my chest hurt, and I was like, I am so out of shape. So, um, you know, they have this, when you're on an airplane and uh, they go through the uh, emergency procedures, they have one that really sticks with me anyway, is if uh, in case of cabin depressurization, put your mask on first and then help people next to you. The reason they do that is if you're trying to help people next to you and you're having a hard time, you'll pass out and they'll still need help. It's better for them to pass out, you to have your mask on and then you to reach over there and get your mask on them uh, than it is for both of you to pass out and you can't help each other. So the moral of the story is you do need to take care of yourself first in some situations, otherwise you can't help other people. And I think I've pushed it as far as I'm willing to go on this one. I've sacrificed, my wife and I both sacrificed a lot to get to this point. So I think we're gonna slow it down a little bit here. Uh, we still got lots of things to do this year. I think, relatively speaking, we're still gonna be pretty busy. But compared to what we've been doing, we're gonna slow it down a lot. 
One of the big problems that I have for the Martian Challenge coming up is I have not been able to work on the digester at all. Um, the heating solution I've put on there is not working. The sun decided to change its relative position in the sky, which is like a well, duh. But again, when I was doing my design work, it was in the middle of winter and I was getting a direct sun shot onto the digester heating system. And now the sun is up higher in the sky and the northern side of the building doesn't get as much sun. <sighs> so we got to deal with that. But what it means is I don't have a lot of gas to cook with. So I might have to cheat and use a microwave and solar power, uh, solar panel power, excuse me, from the panels during the day. Sorry, I got so much stuff I'm trying to shove into this video so you guys kind of know where we're at. My apologies, uh, but I feel like it's important that I get all this stuff out there because there's a lot. Uh, the digester loading solution, I printed a, a, a shredder using the 3D printer kind of to teach me the dynamics, the mechanics of what goes into a shredder. I think that's the solution. We need to build a shredder, but I haven't got to it yet. I haven't. I haven't got to a lot of things other than aquaponics and hydroponics um, and microgreens. So um, we also have to deal with the time is now. Uh, we knew it was going to happen. The, uh, the sun um, during the day, you know, it's beating down in here and we need to put a shade cover on the building. We knew we were going to have to do that. Uh, now I actually need to do it. I'm curious to know your thoughts. If you've stuck with me this long, um, I'm sure you'd be willing to give them, but if you have a greenhouse, I can't seem to find a good way to determine the percent shade cover you should have. Um, I think a 50% shade cover for us would probably be pretty good made of the aluminate foil uh, type of stuff I'm thinking and putting it outside the building, just tying it off uh, outside. That's what I'm thinking. What are your guys' thoughts? I'd love to hear. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have to slow some things down, which means we may not be able to complete everything this year, but I think it's time that we start taking care of our bodies again uh, and uh, get ready for winter without a big stress uh, coming into that. Right now we're in a nice spot, so we just need to get some things tidied up and get, get all the systems that we currently have working. And I'm even considering maybe pushing the digester off until next year. Um, I'm not, not there yet, but I'll say I prefer to get it all done this year. We'll see. So um, I would hate to say that that's blabbing. I don't think it was blabbing. I think that was all actually very important stuff I wanted to get to you guys. Really excited about the conference. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. Things are growing. The greenhouse is coming alive. Uh, the hab is coming alive, excuse me. Uh, I think there's some stuff we need to move around in here. I already notice it. I uh, got to keep those notes like the corn needs to come to the south side. The lettuce needs to go to the north side. Um, those are pretty easy things to do once we get the corn harvested and all that kind of stuff. So I think we're, we're going to have to time a major harvest and then replant uh, here before winter gets here, moving stuff around. But eh, we'll deal with that when it gets here. Thanks for following along. I appreciate everyone who's been with us. Uh, oh. Major congrats to Wrangler Star. If you don't know Wrangler Star, go check out Wrangler Star on YouTube. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wrangler Star, you guys rock. Uh, it's because of you, you inspired us to kind of take the big leap here and get going. Uh, you've inspired so many people and now passing 1 million subscribers. Quite the accomplishment, really amazing. Really proud of you guys. You have, you have suffered, uh, what, over 10 years of really, really hard work. Um, knowing you guys personally, um, just amazing. Congratulations. That's so cool. Uh, really happy for you guys. And uh, I don't think of anyone else I can think of that deserves it more. Nicely done. Congratulations to the Wrangler Star family. And that's it for me here. Thanks for following along again. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to share that The Real Martian is going to be at the ISDC conference in LA, May 27th at 2 p.m. Uh, at the Grand Sheridan. You go check it out online. Um, that's it for me. This is The Real Martian. Out.